We're out and about again in the Twin Otter and today we're on Australia's Gold Coast flying out of Southport and Redcliffe. Now this was a highly anticipated aircraft and there's been a lot of chatter in the month or so since it was released. A lot of it negative chatter it has to be said. Some of that was warranted. Of course bugs are bugs and they'll get fixed eventually but functions and features are something else. In fact I'm in two minds whether to do a detailed review of the Twin Otter because so much is really not simulated at all. So you have to take this aircraft for what it is and fly it according to what it can do and it's in that spirit that I'm going to be taking a look at stall short takeoff and landing operations today. Stall of course is one of the signature capabilities of the Twin Otter now it's an obvious point but a point worth labouring that this is not actually a twin otter. It's a generic aircraft simulation that mimics some of the gross characteristics of a real twin otter. But the nuances are its own. So getting back to stall operations. One of my initial frustrations with the twin otter was the difficulty with putting it down in a short space. Because it seems to float quite long. And this is true regardless of the load, although the stall speeds do vary as you'd expect. Now from discussions in various forums it seems this is largely a consequence of the prop simulation or more to the point the lack of adequate simulation of the props. Now we've never had proper simulation of propellers in FSX or P3D and to date FS2020 gives us essentially the same propeller model although significant changes are on the way in a future update. But for now what you need to know is there's no prop drag effects and there's two major consequences of this. First if you shut down an engine to let's say simulate a failure of course there are no real engine failures but if you shut down an engine to simulate a failure there's actually no need to feather the propeller of the dead engine because it makes no difference. Now more to the point for present purposes pulling power to idle with the props at fully fine has no real effect other than decreasing the thrust. In the real aircraft those windmilling props generate a huge amount of drag and act like giant air brakes and one consequence of this is if you close the power levers in the flare the plane stops flying immediately and drops like a stone. Now this is just what we want in a stall aircraft but we don't get that and instead we float. So if we've just seen an example of that here we are in final approach to Redcliffe Airport, YRED. We've got uh, the standard load, so not too heavy. Going to try and touch down as soon as we can. Little tiny bit of a balloon there, and uh, quite a bit of a float. So ultimately, quite a long landing, even though I was trying to keep it short. And here's an earlier experiment. This is Queenstown Airport, and we're coming in with max gross weight here. Again, we're going to try and Put it down as short as you can. Again, we get that slight balloon and much exaggerated float there. And here's that Queenstown approach again with the numbers. You'll see we're approaching just under 80 knots on final, bleeding it off to 75. That slight balloon, 70 knots, and touchdown at maybe 65. And again, max gross weight. So what can we do to fix this? Well we need something that allows us to slow down abruptly taking the place of those windmilling props. We don't have air brakes or spoilers on this aircraft. There might be some way of artificially introducing those if you know how to tinker with the flight sim aircraft models. I don't know how to do that. So we're going to do something much more basic and that is we have reverse thrust available to us. Now this is where people are going to get on their high horses and tell me this isn't realistic. This is not about realism, this is about using what we've got at our disposal to get a better or a closer fit with the actual performance of the aircraft. So we want this to land in a very short distance. We're hampered by something that's lacking in the model, namely the prop drag. So we're filling that gap with something else and that is to introduce the reverse thrust on very short, in fact not on short final, in the flare and this requires a little bit of finesse or quite a lot of finesse to do but it allows us to make very short touchdowns much more in the domain of what the Twin Otter can actually do and to do it with a reasonable amount of control. It's actually quite tricky to control 
which is a good thing in a sense because it takes some skill to master this as a technique. You can see just how short we went on that landing if we taxi back. So if we just look at that in a little bit more detail, we're taking off here from Southport further down the coast and we're just going to fly a very tight circuit and see if we can make a short landing. And it does take quite a bit of skill to master this as a technique. What you're going to find is, well, a number of things. First of all, if you do this too high, even on short final, you're going to drop far too quickly and hit the ground far too hard. The other thing is, as soon as you introduce reverse thrust, you get a very strong pitch up tendency. The thrust line on this aircraft is high, of course, higher than the centre of gravity. So you need to counter that by assertive nose down elevator. This is a beautiful airport, by the way. This is an Orbix, well, it's sold through Orbix Direct. I think it's developed by a company called AU Scene. This is the Gold Coast right ahead, I think. And this is just beautiful. I'm not sure to what extent this is scenery offered as default by FS2020 and how much of this is the airport vicinity modelled by AU Scene, but the net effect is it's just absolutely gorgeous. Now we're just doing a very, very tight circuit here minimal amount of time in the air we want to do the approach and we're just keeping it slow we've got the flaps still at 10 left those flaps down after takeoff and we're going to 20 degrees right now we're not really doing the procedures in any sense realistically that's not the point we want to get set up on short final with full flaps doing about 80 knots or less as quickly as possible so that's that's what we're aiming for here. We're going to fly down to about 70 knots on the approach. Uh, we're at standard whatever default weight is, so we're, we're fairly light on the weight. But anything below about 70, we're going to start getting the stall warner and we're going to have a very high nose attitude. Now we're high on approach here, but that's deliberate, partly because of the trees there, but also partly because we're doing this as a stall experiment and often we'll be coming in as steeply as we as we like. So we should be on full flaps by now. Turning on to final. Again we've got to watch that speed. If you pay attention to that. And also pay attention to what the torque gauges are doing. We're doing a little bit of finessing of the power on the approach here. So we're down almost to idle, but not quite at idle there and just we, we've got a lot more response out of this aircraft than we did in the Twin Otter Extended back in FSX or P3D so we're just tweaking that as we go in might look like we're going to land long here but don't forget we've got that fairly lengthy displaced threshold only the latter half of the runway is available to us now watch the power we're going to go to idle right about now we're going to into the flare as soon as we're into that flare we're going to hit reverse thrust and it plonks itself onto the ground. We're also going to hit the brakes. And uh, kind of went a bit crooked there. One wheel came off the ground. I'm not sure what's happening there. So there it is. Stall operations for real in the Aerosoft Twin Otter. With just a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of finesse using the reverse thrust and the flare. Now it occurs to me that could be automated somehow using something like FSU IPC. Now I don't have FSU IPC 7. The flights in 2020 maybe I'll get that just so I can experiment although it's probably worth waiting for the prop physics upgrade that's coming in I don't know if that's coming in the next update but it's coming soon so you know maybe all this goes away with that update so time will tell but for now super stall in our twin otter